But then I go home and I'm studying, I'm doing the micros and the calorie, you know, I'm doing all this and results are coming in and, and, and I feel good. Same thing with your spiritual walk with God. You've got to be intentional with God. Had Moses not been intentional in his life and his calling? Because remember, we all have a calling. God has called you, and I'm going to dig, dig, dig deeper into that. God has called me. We all have God's calling in our life. There is a will. We, we always say, we always mention this, and we lose a lot of people when we say the will of God. You know, when visitors come to church and we're like, hey, you need to follow the will of God. They, they don't even know what the will of God is. When We don't even know what the will of God is. Amen. But I know one thing for a fact that is the will of God. The will of God is for you to know him. That is the will of God. He has called you out of darkness, the Bible says, into his marvelous light. You that have received revelation of the oneness of God, God has called you to a deeper relationship with him. Amen. We are to mature in God. Can anybody say amen? amen. Just like we mature in our careers. Just like we mature as a person. This Alex is not the Alex of 10 years ago. Amen. With God, it requires the same. God requires for you to mature. That is the only way you are going to live an intentional life with God. Mature. But we have a lot of Christians. And I have a lot of friends that are Christians. That have been in church for a long time. And they're still at the daycare. At the, at the babysitting area of the church. You're not going to grow with God. You're not going to grow with God. With that immaturity. God has a plan. And that plan is to, for us to bring determination, steadiness for the outcome, boldness for the outcome we want to see. If not, this plan is going to get away from us. And seemingly, it's not going to have mercy over us. One of the greatest motivational speakers said, and I'll state again, a life not well planned is a life that is planned to fail. In everything you do, whether you go to work, go to school, or a stay-at-home mom, whatever you do in life, you have to have a plan for you to execute. You have to have a strategy with that plan for you to execute. That is how you know you are going to be successful and have been successful in what you get yourself into. No different with God. With God, you have to have a plan. And you have to have strategies with God of execution. Your plan tells you who to hang out with, who to socialize life with. Your plan, your strategy plan gives you the empowerment to make decisions that are for your plan and not against your plan. And the problem why we hang out with the wrong crew half the time in our life is because we have no plan. And when we have no plan, like the Bible says, we are a boat without a captain in the middle of the sea yes. going from one end to the other. Amen. Yes. But when you have a captain in the boat, a hurricane comes, guess what? The captain knows, hey, I still have my destination. I know where I'm going. Whether this hurricane comes or doesn't come, I know where I'm going. Life is no different, and life with God is no different either. You have to have a plan in life. If you don't have a plan in your life for God, to pursue God, then anything that the world throws you at, you are going to follow. And I'm not like, well, that's not true. No, it is true. You have nothing to fall back. And we all know the worst thing in this life is to have no what? Backbone. Mm. 
And it's very clear that the Bible states, he who built his house on the sand, when the water comes, you will go with it. But he who built his home on a rock, you will stand firm when hell and hot water come. We are talking about living an intentional life. I mean, I'm excited when I talk about intentional life. There is a plan. And let me tell you my plan. And this is just, just a little bit of my plan. Amen. I wake up every day. At 4.15, I'm up. This dude is up. You can call me at 4.15. I'm going to answer like I've been up for hours, too. You know, my wife, she gets after me because I have customers call me in the middle of the night sometimes. And I'm like, hello? And they're like, oh, man, I'm starting to wake you up. Man, I've been up, man. Don't worry. I'm up. Two o'clock in the morning. She says, like, what do you do that for? Because I'm being intentional with my clients. I want them to know that when they ring my phone at any hours of the day, he will be ready to answer. And when he answers, I'm going to have his full attention. I did the same thing to one of my service techs. I called him in the middle of the night because I got to call him in the middle of the night to go to somewhere else to repair a valve. I called him, hey, man. Hey, man, you're in full service. Wake up. Well, you lost this job. Bye. Call me somebody else. And all my people know, when they call me, it's it's, it's going to be serious. When I call them, it's going to be serious. You have to be intentional. Be intentional with God. Be intentional with yourself. When you apply intentionality into your life, your results, the outcome to, what, to all that hustle and effort, it's going to be rewarding. And it's going to be fruitful. Amen? When you apply intentionality to your prayer, the outcome to all that prayer, to all that hustle, all that, all, all, all that grind you put into prayer, you are going to benefit from that outcome. Yes, yes. When you worship God, and, and you put hustle to it, and you put intentionality to it, you put some fervent spirit into your worship, you are going to benefit from the outcome of your worship. Yes. Amen? When you seek the word of God and you, and you read the word of God and, and you get deeper into the word of God. Hey, God never said never go and get a dictionary to figure out what the words are. No, go and get deeper into the word of God. When you apply to be intentional with it, you, 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 you and I will benefit from that outcome. We will inherit what God wants us to have in life. We will get what God has already placed and called into our life. God says, I, I've given you this land. He told the Israelites, and, and I'm going to tell you, Israelites, everything that your feet touch belongs to you. Everything. Intentional. He says, and I want you to go and possess this land. I want you to go and conquer this land. I, I, I want you to go and... And, 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 and search it. I want you to go and study it. I want you to go and call it your own. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. God has given us so many blessings. God yes, has yes. God has ordained so many things into our life. But you are missing out on God's blessing because you lack intentionality with him. Amen. Had, had the people of God not walked around the walls of Jericho intentionally, yes. I assure you those walls would have never come down. That I assure you God would have made them look like a fool against their enemy. Yes. But because they were intentional on every yes. step. Yes. Then you get, God is not here to lie. He is not a man to break his promise. God is going to bring these walls down. I am not going to, to tired. I am not going to grow weary of God's promises. Because they were intentional. And because they were intentional, the Bible says that the walls came crumbling down. No, Noah, there's going to be a flood coming. And I want you to build a boat. And this is how I want you to build the boat. Had Noah not built the ark God wanted him to build, he would have sunk with all the unbelievers and all the people that were sinning against God. But because Noah got intentional that him and his entire house were saved. Amen. He was intentional. Yes. 
with God. God, you want to build this? Okay. I'm going to need all the help I can get. And, 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 and it took years to build this, this amazing ark. It, it, didn't, it didn't take months or, 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 or weeks like it would today with this, all the technology. This man had to carve and, and cut and, 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 and hammer by hand. Man, I can only imagine the guy God says, Alex, I want you to build this ark right now. And like Noah did. I'm like, man, you know what? I quit. It's over. We are like that with God. Because his plans may seem impossible. We're like, mm, I, I, I can't. This ain't for me. This is so 